What is the terrifying backstory behind King the Conqueror's scars? The variant of King the Conqueror introduced to us in Quantumania has been colloquially referred to as Warrior or Prime King, and is one of the most violent variants that we currently are aware of in the multiverse. In addition to his battle armor, he bears two distinct scars down the sides of his face, reminiscent of his comic book armor. But what exactly is the origin of these scars? And what can the original comic lore tell us? Where did they come from? And what do they mean for this particular variant's past? Well today, watchers of the Marvel Multiverse, let's explore this idea as spoilers lie ahead for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. First, let's address the origin of this iconic design from the comic books, and then use this to see if we can trace the source back to these scars in the MCU. In the comics, these lines actually began as ceremonial markings from an ancient tribe in the year 65 million BC. Here, King was in the very early days of his conquest and found himself in the Cretaceous period, and it was here where he came across a native by the name of Adi. Adi, though, was in a fight for her life and was being attacked by a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Here, though, Kang decided to save her, and therefore, he was taken back to her tribe as a thank you for saving the young girl's life. This tribe is where he first received these two markings, which were later integrated into his very armor once he returned to the future and constructed his battle suit. This peace, however, would prove to be short-lived, as the future variant of himself found Kang's affection for these people to be absolutely disgusting and not in line with who he was meant to be, a conqueror. The tribe was soon after attacked by this future version of Nathaniel Richards, and after their total eradication, Kang chose to pay tribute to them by integrating their culture into his primary combat armor. This Prime King, however, this warrior, doesn't simply work this look into his suit, but they are the physical scars embedded into his very skin. And while he doesn't give a full explanation for this, there are a few possibilities given what we know about this variant. What stands out the most about these markings is the symmetry, which seems to indicate that they were most likely intentional, potentially even self-inflicted. It's very unlikely that two random scars within the heat of battle would have lined up so perfectly with one another. The predominant theory goes back to the original source material of his markings, which suggests that this king spent time in the Cretaceous period as well and may have even met Adi, but the full story of what actually happened may vary from his comic book counterpart. So let's explore a few other ideas. The first option is that rather than tribal markings, these may have been tribal scars. If these are tribal scars, and he was granted these markings as an act of solidarity, then it might indicate that this tribe was particularly violent. This might mean that Kang learned much of his aggressive tendencies from Adi and her tribe, tracing his warmongering ways to a formative experience early in his conquest. Another possibility is that these scars were in fact self-inflicted. The marks, however, can likely be traced back to the same experience, indicating that he did have some emotional connection to this group of people. After their demise, however, he might have taken it upon himself to inflict these injuries onto his face in remembrance of the few people that he may have ever truly loved. This would also help to explain much of his disdain towards the other kings on the council, as we learned that he hates variants of himself and the feeling is largely mutual. This Kang is one of the first violent iterations that we know of in the multiverse, and he was on a quest to prune as many timelines as he could manage before he was inevitably stopped by the army of his counterparts, known as the Council of Kangs. The character's full motivations, however, is still shrouded in mystery, and while we can gather pieces, there are still elements missing from the Quantumania adventure. We know that Prime Kang understands how the multiversal conflict ends, and he can foresee the establishment of the sacred timeline under He Who Remains. It therefore stands to reason that he is doing this in order to kill as many variants of himself as possible, but there might be a much deeper underlying emotional side to this than simply hunting Kangs for the betterment of the multiverse. While this might be the outward understanding, if he holds a personal vendetta against those who killed Adi and her tribe, then he might have a much brighter fire beneath his actions, explaining his violence and aggression towards himself. It is important to remember, however, that this is largely speculative, and we don't learn much about this king from before his exile. But given what we do know, either of these options seem like they could fit very well with what we currently understand about Warrior Prime Kang. Additionally, the Council of Kang scene in the post-credit teaser shows us that this design is not specific to just him, 
While they aren't expressed in any scar form, nor are they present in any other variant, but we do know that this is a common style for a king. Ramata in particular sports the markings, as do several variants within the Colosseum itself, indicating that they too had run-ins with Adi and her tribe, but did not turn nearly as violent as Warrior King may have. This leads us to wonder if perhaps there was something else that sparked his aggressive tendencies and sent him escalating to the point of all-out war. But as of now, we will have to wait for more information before we can draw a firm conclusion regarding this question. One thing is clear, however. What if this was a version of himself that is marking them on his very face because another variant of himself went back and killed Adi and her tribe? What if it was this personal connection that drew Kang to make these markings permanent on his face? Markings given to him long ago with people that he truly cared about. Similar between the relationship we see with Thanos and Gamora. What if Prime Kang did in fact have a softer side and is truly interested in the betterment of the multiverse, even if it means destroying the rest of himself? the same goal that He Who Remains had. And if you were with me, and if you do in fact believe that Prime Kang will return in the MCU one day, do you think that his scars could be explained? And do you think that this is an integral part why he hates variants of himself so deeply? Anyway, my friends, and watchers of the Marvel Multiverse, please feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments down below, as well as any theories that you would like to see us address or breakdowns of comic history. As always, my friends, thank you so much for watching the channel. Hit that subscribe button to assemble and join our team, and I will hopefully see you soon.